All right, you guys, we'll go ahead and get started. Start off by saying Shalom. All praises to the Most High. Uh, tonight's lesson, we're going to go into uh, commandment: Thou shalt not, thou shalt not have any other gods before Ahia. And then we're going to tag team it with uh, Thou shalt not take. The name of the Most High in vain. So we're gonna put those two together. Exodus. So let's go to Exodus 20 and 3. We'll start off with Exodus 20 and 3, and then we'll go right to Exodus 20 and 7. So the name of the lesson: Thou shalt not have no other gods before me, and thou shalt not take the name of the Most High in vain. All right. So that's a nice lesson. Uh, yeah, you can start off in Exodus 20 and 3. Go ahead. We in the book of Exodus. Chapter 20, verse 3. And it reads, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. In the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 7. And it reads, Thou shalt not take the name of the Most High in vain. Uh, Alright. So, we're going to read so this is tonight's title, Exodus 20 and 3, Thou shalt not have no other gods before me, and Exodus 20 and 7, Thou shalt not take his name in vain. So we're going to break it down, how people are putting other gods before him, and then we're going to break it down, how his name is being put in vain. Alright, Exodus 20 and 2. We're in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. And it reads, I am the most high a height, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bond. So the most high in Exodus 20 and 2 says, he is the most high, uh, the most high thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Okay, so I'm going to go through everything again, the initialization. Okay, so he says he is the one that's brought all of us out of bondage okay and then he says yeah, no, he no, is the, the god of uh, hi, hold on for a second you guys i'll put sister erica on mute all right while we're doing that go ahead and go to john 8 and 32 We're in the book of St. John, chapter 8, verse 32, and it reads, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Okay, so John 8 and 32 says, And the truth shall make you free. Alright, you shall know the truth, and that truth shall make you free. So tonight, some of the scriptures we're going to go over is all truth. Okay. Uh, can't get my my internet up. I'm trying to put Sister Eric on mute. All right, but we're 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 talking about the Most High's name being put in vain. And then he says in Exodus twenty three, Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. So, in order to know what you're doing on the aspect, you have to know who He is first. All right. So that's going to be the question of the day. Well, if it says thou shalt not take the Most High's name in vain, then the question of the day then is, is, is what is his name? And that's what we're going to break down. And John 8, 8, 32 says, and truth shall set you free. So once you start following the truth, then you shall be set free. But the truth starts off with knowing who you're calling on. The truth starts off with knowing who you're praying to so once you break that down and start knowing the truth on that aspect now you have the opportunity to be saved let's go to Exodus 3 and 13 so that's what we're going to get to the bottom of tonight a lot of people don't know this I know a lot of people in the group we know the name but we have to push this and let people know on and let people know on YouTube 
and let people know on Facebook who the true name is and who the true power is. Okay, there are many gods. Okay, there are many gods out there. All right, so that's why Exodus twenty and three he says, "Thou shalt not put no other gods before me, because there are many gods." Okay, so with that in mind, since there's many gods, then we got to get down to the bottom of who is the true power. All right. Go ahead. We're in the book of Exodus. Chapter 3 verse 13. And it reads. And Moses said unto the Most High. Behold. When I come unto the children of Israel. And shall say unto them. The power of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say to me. What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Okay, break down the word name right there. We have name. It is H. 80, 34. Name is H. 80, 34. Hold on for a second, you guys. Sorry about that. Go ahead. We have name. It is H eighty thirty four. Name is H eighty thirty four. And we have Sham Sham. S H A M Sean and it is position compare in appellate appellation as a mark or memory of individuality. Read that again, read that part again. Position and what? Position compare and appellation 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 appellation. It is as a mark or memorial of individuality by implication, honor, authority, character. So the word name right here represents as a mark or memorial of individuality. Okay, so the word name is, is, is describing someone, a mark, a memorial, individuality. So this name right here is speaking of an individual because when you try to talk to a lot of people and tell them his name is important, they say, oh, well, that name right there is just a title or no. Right here, when you break it down, it says a mark or memorial of individuality. So it's breaking somebody down here in Exodus 3 and 13 when he asks, what is what is his name? All right. Verse 14. We're in the book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. And it reads, And the Most High said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Okay. Just for the new hearers, let's break down the word I am. We have I am. It is H 1961. I am is H nineteen sixty one and we have Hi Hi and it is H A Y A H and it is to exist. So I I am means to exist. Break right down the word that we have that and it is H834 that is H834 and we have a sharp a sharp and it is A S H 
A R A S H A R a shark and it is a pronoun root relative pronoun of every gender and number who which what that okay so the word I am means higher a higher and the word that means a shark so when he says my name is I am that I am a higher a shark a higher that's his name Exodus 3 and 14 it says And the Most High said unto Moses I am that I am Ahiah, Ashar, Ahiah And he said Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel I am has sent me Remember Moses asked a question in verse 13 Alright He says when I come unto the children of Israel And they say unto me Who is the power of your fathers that has sent me to, unto you Remember at that time when we was in bondage Under the Egyptians children of Israel along with Pharaoh and his people the Egyptians were serving all these different type of gods there were many gods in the land so when we was in bondage they seen many gods every time they went to work on this corner on this corner different gods so Moses said hey I know this I know these people are under many gods right now so when I go tell them that you sent me then they're going to ask well what god is this which one is he so this is why Moses was asking, what is your name? And he told Moses, my name is I am that I am, which is Ahiah, Ashar, Ahiah, verse 15. Book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 15. And it reads, And the Most High said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Most High, Ahiah of your fathers, the power of Abraham, the power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. So when he gave Moses his name. Ahiah, Ashar, Ahiah. And he says go to the children of Israel. And say to them. I am the father of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. Alright. And this is my name forever. And this is a my memorial unto all generations. So it, not only did he say this is my name forever. But he said, this is my memorial unto all generations. And you have many people today. You can go talk to them today, tomorrow, yesterday, and they'll tell you, ah, well, that don't matter. That was back then. Or, ah, that was a title that he gave Moses. Or, ah, right here, he never said, hey, we just broke down the word name. It didn't say no word title in there. Okay. And we just broke it down and it didn't say, hey, this is just for you, Moses. Or, hey, this is just for the children of Israel when you bring them out of bondage. He says, no. This name I'm giving you is my name. And it's my name forever and for all generations. So why are people calling him God? And why are people calling uh, on all these other gods when he says, don't put no other gods before me? That's like, that's like me walking up to Brother KG right now and calling him boy. Boy is a title for the gender, the male gender. Boy or man. Hey man. No. His name is Kevin. So just like the Most High, his name is not God. His name is I am that I am, which is a higher, a shah, a higher. So just, just like anybody else, he wants his respect. Somebody came up to me and said, hey boy. I'm just like, what you, who you talking to? That's what I'm going to say to him. That's kind of how a higher is. A higher is like, hey, listen, everybody's considered a God that has some type of power. Call me, give me my respect. All right, but he says, this is my memorial unto all generations. Break down memorial. We have memorial. It is H2143. Memorial is H2143. And we have Zakar. Zakar. And it is Z A K A A R. Zakar. Z A K A R. And it is a memento, abstractly recollection, rarely if ever, by implication, commemoration, memorial, memory, remembrance. Commemoration is the act of honoring the memory of some person or event. That's the, what, what the word commemoration means. Commemoration means 
the act of honoring the memory of some person or event. So the commemoration right here is honoring Ahia, Asha Ahia. His name is being put out there for the first time and this is the act of remembering who he is. That's what memorial means. Memorial means commemoration, memory, or remembrance. Commemoration means the act of honoring the memory of some person. So memorial, this is my commemoration. This is my memorial unto all generations. This is my name for all generations. This is the act of remembering what happened at this point when I gave Moses my name. Okay? Give the word memorial in the Webster Dictionary. We have memorial coming from the Webster. And it is that which preserves the memory of something. Go slow. Read it again so everybody can get it. You know you got people taking notes. We have memorial. And it is that which preserves. The memory of something, anything that serves to keep in memory. So anything that serves to keep in memory. So he says, this is my memorial unto all generations. This is something that you need to keep in your memory bank. You need to preserve this. Go ahead. We're in the middle of the definition and it says a monument is a memorial of a deceased person. Or of an event. The Most High Supper. Is a memorial. Of the death and sufferings. Of the Messiah. So the word memorial. Is. To preserve something. To serve to keep something in memory. That's what the memorial is. So he says. This is my memorial to all generations. This must be preserved for all generations it must be kept okay so why are people not keeping this and by people not keeping his name his laws are not being followed because if you don't know who you're following how can you follow the correct laws but if you know you was following a higher a shot a higher now you can follow his laws and his commandments but that's why they don't follow his laws because they don't follow him who he is let's go to Deuteronomy 6 and 4 so he says, this is my memorial to all generations. And he says in Exodus 20 and 3, thou shalt not have no other gods before me. So when he made that commandment, he knew there were going to be many other gods put out there. That's why he made that first commandment, because he knew there were going to be many gods. So he says, don't put none of them before me. I am a sole deity. I am by myself. I don't need no other gods. That's why he put that commandment out there. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4, and it reads, Here, O Israel, the Most High, our power is one power. So it says, He is one. Here, O Israel, the Most High, our power is one. If they say He is many, or if they say He, he was a group of people, or if they say that He had a team of people, it says, He is one. One, he is by himself. I am that I am, which is a higher a shaw a higher. Romans ten and thirteen. But a lot of people don't want to roll with that. A lot of people now follow these different religions, and when you follow these religions, you have to understand each religion has their own god that they follow. But they teach you through religion that each god, yeah, is 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 our own god. But they're really one, that they're the same person. He's just a different name in every religion. But at the end of the day, he's the same person, the same God that's going to save us all. Buddha, Allah, Jesus, all these people are one person. They just different gods for that religion because of that language. That's what, that's what they teach. And that's false information. Because he didn't say this right here in Exodus 3 and 13 through 15 on what we just read. Romans 10 and 13. Go ahead. Book of Romans. Chapter 10 verse 13. 
and it reads, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Most High shall be saved. So it didn't say, Who shall call on the name of God? It says, Whosoever shall call upon the name. It never it don't use the word God right here. This is how you this is where the trickery is. You guys, you gotta understand what's going on. Because if his name, if he wanted you to call him God, he would say it right here. For whosoever shall call upon the name God shall be saved. No. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Most High shall be saved. What's the name? Ahiah, Asha, Ahiah. Verse 14. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So a lot of people, they've never heard the name Ahiah Asha Ahiah, which is I am that I am. So they don't so when when so when you go try to talk to somebody and tell them, hey, you know the most high got a name and it's Ahiah Asha Ahiah, they're not gonna believe that. Because they never heard that. So they were well, like, hey, when I was growing up, I never heard that name. Why am I gonna believe something like that? So that's what 14 just said. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? They've never believed in this name. And how the, and, and how shall they believe in him on whom they have not heard? They've never heard this type of talk before. They've never heard the name Ahiah Shaw Ahiah, so they can't believe that's his name. Alright? So today in our day and age, nobody is calling on his name. And he said right here, whosoever shall call on him shall be saved. So that's why when you read in, in the Apocrypha and uh Second Edris 8 and 1 it says actually let's just go to it. Let's go to it real quick. Go to your apocrypha. So grab the apocrypha. Do you have yours? No? Shoot. Here, I'll grab mine. Go to second address 8 and 1. All right, go ahead. We're in the book of 2nd Ezra. Chapter 8, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it reads, And he answered me, saying, The Most High has made this world for men. So he's made the world for many people. M millions of people live in this world. Go ahead. But the world to come for a few so the world to come, which is after salvation, salvation, the kingdom, is only going to be for a few. And when we just read in Romans 10 and 3, it says, For whoever shall call on the name of the Most High shall be saved. So a lot of people ain't going to be saved because they're not calling on the name Ahiah, Asha, Ahiah. So that's why in the new world, after salvation, the kingdom, only a few will be saved because only a few people is going to be calling on the name of the Most High. That's simple. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Most High shall be saved. If you're not calling on the name I am that I am, which is a higher shall a higher, you're not going to make it to the new world. Let's go to Leviticus 24 and 15. Go ahead. We're in the book of Leviticus. Chapter 24, verse 15. And it reads, And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curseth his power shall bear his sin. And he that blasphemeth the name of the Most High, he shall surely be put to death. And all the congregation shall certainly stone him, as well the stranger, as he that is born in the land, when he blasphemeth, the name of the Most High shall be put to death. So it says, and he that blasphemy the name of the Most High, he shall surely be put to death. All right, break that down. Break down the word blasphemy. We have blasphemy. It is H5344. Blasphemy. H5344 and we have Naka 
Cobb. Na Cobb. And it is N A Q A B. Na Cobb. N A Q A B. And it is name. Primitive root to puncture, literally, to perforate, with more or less or less violence. So puncture, all right, right here, blasphemy means to puncture. And he said, verse 16 says, and he that punctured the name of the Most High, so puncture, so when you puncture something, you put a hole in it, all right, you destroy it almost, you're destroying it. And he that blasphemy the name of the Most High shall surely be put to death. Okay? And that's what's happening right now. People are blaspheming his name. They're not using it. And then when you do take it to somebody and give it to them, they're laughing at it. They're, 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 they're putting holes in it. Making a mockery out of it. Alright? Romans 2 and 24. Try it tomorrow. Try go talking to people at work. People in your family and tell them the name of the Most High and show them the scriptures and watch how they laugh at it and watch how they make a mockery out of it and watch how they be like, well, you tripping, you in a cult. <laughs> I'm in a cult and I'm following the name that he gave Moses, but I'm in the cult. Who was what going to know for real though? People laughing, but that's true. You can go tell people tomorrow this. Look, look, it's right here. This is the name he gave Moses, and this is two things they're gonna say. That's a title. And that was back then. Or are you in a cult? What are you doing? Who told you that? Why are you following it? That doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter, why did he say this is my name forever and this is my memorial for all generations? It matters. But like we just read, Romans 10 and 3 says, Whosoever call on the name of the Most High, Ahiah, shall be saved. And that's why the, the new world is only going to have a few people because don't nobody want to call on this name. That's simple. That's simple right there. That's simple mathematics. You put it together. Romans 2 and 24. Book of Romans. Chapter 2, verse 24. And it reads, For the name of the Most High is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. So the name of the Most High is blasphemy among the Gentiles through you. As it is written. So the Gentiles are using you also to blaspheme his name. They brought it in and taught you to go away from it. And not only have they taught you to go away from it. Now they're using you to mock his name. They're using you to do things. So that's why it says through you. So now they got rappers, they got entertainers, they got many people now that's the children of Israel who's been taught that his name ain't correct and they blasphemy and now the Gentiles use you to blaspheme in the name. The Gentiles don't even gotta you do it no more. They use you. You're the one that's making a, a, a mockery out and break down the, the name blasphemy now in, in Greek. We broke it down in, in Hebrew. Now we'll break it down in Greek for this precept. Break it down right here. We have blasphemy. It is G987. Blasphemy is G987. And it is blasphemy. Blasphemy. And it is defame. Rail on, revile, speak evil. So blasphemy in the Greek is speak evil against and defame. What's defame mean? So that's like somebody having some fame. All right. They became big time. I had a little fame and then somebody come in and defame you. That's what defame means. So that's what's happening to the Most High. He made his name famous to Moses and then... The Gentiles defamed it, and now they're using us, the children of Israel, on a daily basis to keep it defamed. Give them the Webster for defamed. Coming from the Webster, we have defamed, and it is to slander falsely and maliciously, to utter words, respecting another, 
which tend to injure his reputation. Oh, my. I'll read it all again real quick so they can get it. Says, to slander and falsely and maliciously to utter words respecting another which tend to injure his reputation or occupation. So we'll stop right there. So defame means to utter words respecting another which tend to injure his reputation or occupation. That's what's happening to Ahia Shaw Ahia, which is the one single power. His occupation is the creator of this world. Now you have Beyonce, Kanye West, Oprah, all these different people that say he's nothing. They 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 don't know who created the world, but they are God themselves. His reputation. Alright, his reputation he's not being represented correctly. Okay? So he's been put on the back burner. So his name is being defamed. Okay? And not only is it being defamed, but they're using the children of Israel to defame the name now. Let's go to Exodus 20 and 7. So you have to understand what's been happening, what's happening today in the world. And how it's happening. And a lot of people don't understand like why it's so important when you wake up and you find a true Israelite. And they're teaching why they get so offensive when people say it doesn't matter. Listen, it does matter. It matters with 100% salvation. That's what matters. If you don't use his name, you don't get into the kingdom. If you don't use his name, your prayers won't be heard. So that's why us, the people that have been woken, the chosen people, we have to go out there and reclaim his name. We have to go out there and put the honor of his name back into effect. Everywhere you go, you're using the word Ahaya Ashaw. Ahaya, don't be scared to use it. And when you got your Mitri on or when you got your scarf on your head and your fringes on, don't be scared to use it. Alright? Go ahead. Book of Exodus. Chapter 20, verse 7. And it reads, Thou shalt not take the name of the Most High thy power in vain. For the Most High will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. He will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. So in this precept, Exodus 27, the key word right here is name. Thou shalt not take his name. Thou shalt not take the name of the Most High in vain. That's one. And then it says... For the Most High will not hold him guiltless that take his name in vain. If his name was God, he wouldn't have the word name in his precept twice. So that's why people got to get past that God stage. His name is God. The name doesn't matter. No, if that's the case, it wouldn't have name right here. All right, but like we just broke down the word defame, it means to slander falsely. So we got people out there falsely putting out these, this, this information saying that his name doesn't matter. It's, that's falsehood. That's that's what defame means. They're falsehood, the true name of the Most High. John 8 and 32, we read it earlier, says, and the, the, the whole truth and the truth shall set you free. Ezekiel 36 and thir uh, 19. So in Exodus 27, and 7, he's letting you know right here, his name is in God. Like I say, the name God is a title. Just like the like the word supervisor. Alright? A company has many supervisors. But the supervisors all have names, right? You don't go into a company and say, Hey, supervisor. Hey, supervisor. No, that's like the name God. God, there are many gods. So all these different supervisors, they all have different names. Just like all the different gods have different names. Horus. Alright? I already named off Allah. All of them have their own names. So the Most High has his own name also. Ezekiel 36 and 19. And by the way, the word God just means power. Alright, that's it. Someone that's in power can be a God. Alright. Go ahead. We're in the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 36, verse 19. And he reads, And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the country according to their way and according to their doings I judged them 
All right, let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and 64. So he scattered us. I scattered them among the heathens. Talking about Israel, I scattered them among the heathen, which is the Gentiles, and they were dispersed through the country. So they were dispersed through the world according to their way and according to their doing, I judged them. Okay, so he judged us off of our doings and our ways. We wasn't following the ways of who? Ahiah. He brought us from under the bondage of Pharaoh and he gave us our, his ways to go about, but we wasn't going about his ways. We were still going about our ways. We were still calling on the guys that they wanted to call on. So he scattered them. And when he scattered them, what happened? Read Deuteronomy 28 and 64. We're in the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 64. And it reads, And the Most High shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So who is he talking to when he says, And... And, and the Most High shall scatter thee among all the people from one end of the earth to the other. He's talking about Israel. He's talking about the true, true, the, the true children that's in bondage right now. And he says, once I scatter you, and there thou shalt serve other gods. So when I put you in these other countries and this other, these other lands, you're going to serve other gods. You're not going to serve me. So that's what happened. He put Israel in America. He put Israel in, 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 in South America and all these different places. And there, we are serving other gods. Our people are serving other gods, which are these religions. When you look at all the religions that people are following, you're serving. These are the other gods that he's talking about. And then he broke down the two major gods that people will be serving, which is, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Those are the two major gods. Wood is the Christian religion with the cross. And the stone is the Kaaba dealing with the Muslim religion. So he tells you right here the religions that you're going to be following in these other lands. And he tells you right here the other gods that you're going to be serving. Let's go to Jeremiah 17 and 4 so people can realize who, the, who he's talking about when he says, I'm going to scatter thee among all the people from one end of the earth to the other. So people got to understand he's not talking about the so-called white man. The so-called white man hasn't been scattered. So-called white man is sitting comfortably wherever he wants to sit. So he's not talking about him. Jeremiah 17 and 4. Go ahead. We're in the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 17 verse 4. And it reads. And thou. Even thyself shall discontinue from thine inheritance that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever. So he says, And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. So this is why our people don't know who, who they are because your heritage has been taken away from you. It's been discontinued. So this is why it's easy for a so-called black man to call himself African-American when he's neither one. He's, he's neither African, he's neither American. But he don't know his heritage. And the Most High says, And I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in a land which thou knowest not. We never knew nothing about America. Our people didn't know nothing about this land. But we're serving our enemies here still today. Today you're still serving your enemy. Every time you get up and go to work, you're serving the enemy. But the enemy has tricked you mentally put you in slavery slavery mentally and make you think you go to work you get a check you can buy bill you can buy clothes and pay for your bills so now they they tricked you to make you think you're not in slavery you are in hardcore slavery because the moment you don't go to work for two days out of the week you can't pay some bills you have to get up and go to work that's slavery you can't just sit at home and chill and say i'm not gonna go to work today i'm gonna take a couple days off and then all your bills gonna be paid Try, try, try not paying your rent this month and see what happens. You're going to get kicked out. So nothing's free. You are, you are in slavery. And the enemy has the, the, the yoke around your neck still, but it's just mentally around your, your spirit. The yoke is around your spirit now. 
versus being around your neck and around your ankles. Got to understand, they got a hold of your, your spirit like no other. And you got to cut loose. And the only way you can cut loose from that yoke is by calling on the true name, Ahaya Ashaw Ahaya. And he'll take you out of that spiritual bondage that America has us under. They have us under a, a, a bad trends, you guys. And people don't understand it because they feel like, hey, I got materialistic things. I got clothes. I got this. I got that. So I'm good. Listen, it's all bad. We got to wake up and realize what's going on. Go back to Ezekiel 36 and 20. We read 19. Let's read 20. So we have to understand, you guys, just because you can wake up and you got a car to drive in, you got a nice house and all that, does not mean you're free. Like I said, if you're free, don't pay your rent this month in and see what happens. You have to continue to get up and slave every day just to, just to make it check by check. You got so many people, 75% of the world, if not 80% of the world, that lives check by check check you have at least 65 to 70 percent in the world who does not have savings so many people you can line up 10 people right now and seven out of the 10 people have no savings they are waiting on that next check that next check it, they can't wait for it to come and the sad thing about it is, is when that check comes it's already gone so people are, are are struggling check the check just to be broke and let's not talk about how they got majority of the men on child support and in debt. This is crazy. When I was working for the white man, that's why I got away from it. I worked for the white man. I paid child support. Listen, I would work 80 hours every two weeks and get a check that was $189 every two weeks. I was like, what is this? Why am I working? You serious? Take I don't even pay for gas nor lunch. Two weeks, I had to get here. I had to eat lunch, and you're going to give me $189? That's the system we are under. Spiritual bondage. Ezekiel 36 and 20. Go ahead. Book of Ezekiel. Chapter 36, verse 20. And it reads, And when they entered in unto the heathen, whither they went and profaned my holy name, when they said to them, These are the people of the Most High, and are gone, are gone forth out of His land. So the true people of the Most High are not in His land. So that lets you know the people that are sitting in Israel today that call themselves Israel are false individuals. He says, And when they entered unto the heathen, see, His true people are sitting with the heathen. Whether they went, they profound my holy name. So once we went to America and all these other places, we profound his holy name, which is Ahia, Ashar, Ahia, I am that I am. When they said to them, these are the people of the Most High and are gone forth out of his land. So people that are sitting in Jerusalem and Israel right now, like I said, are not the true people. Those Jewish people are false individuals. Go to Revelations 3 and 9. Those people that are sitting in Jerusalem right now, those people that are sitting in Israel right now, are not the true people. They are liars. They are liars. Go ahead. Book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 9. And they read, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. So he tells you that those people that say they are Jews are not, but they are liars. They are the synagogues of Satan. The true Jews is, is you and I, the people that are sitting in bondage. If you want to know who Jews are, people are like, well, who are the Jews? Anybody that's in bondage. People who can't do things. People that are under, their, their, under the will of America. People that are in slavery still. People that are poor. People that are in poverty. Those are Jews. Let's go to 2 Kings 17 and 29. So we have to get it to correct. The truth shall set you free. And what's the truth? What we're talking about tonight. What's the truth? 
people that are sitting in Jerusalem and in Israel right now are not the true people of the Most High. What's the truth? His true people have been scattered amongst the heathen. What's the truth? Once we got scattered amongst the heathen, we lost our heritage. What's the truth? Once we got scattered among the heathen, we started profan profaning his name. What's the truth? Once we got among the heathen, they started making you follow all these different religions and telling you uh, when you when you got older and you start asking, well, why does this religion have this, this God? And why does this religion have this God? And they tell you, oh, well, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, they're all the same God, but just in every religion, there's different languages, so we had to call on this God. No, wake up and smell the coffee. That's the true God that they're calling on for that religion, and he is a deity of Satan. Synagogue. Point blank. Go ahead. We're in the book of Second Kings. Chapter 17, verse 29. And it reads, How be it every nation made gods of their own? It tells you right here. So don't let them tell you that these religions are the same gods. No, they're not. It tells you right here. Every nation made gods of their own which are these religions so every religion made their own god and they're following their own god read it again let them know where you're from read it again we're coming from the book of second kings we're in chapter 17 verse 29 and here read how be every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places, which the Samaritans had made. Every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. So they made their own gods, and they put them in the houses of the high places, which is these churches. Alright, but every nation, America made their own god, China made their own god, Rome made their own god. They're all following their own gods. Go back to Ezekiel 36 and 21. We read 19 and 20 already. Go back to 21. So all these nations, you guys, are following their own religions and their own gods. That's why every nation you go to, except America, every nation you go to have their own religion. And they stick to that own religion. But America is what? Antichrist. They have many different religions. Many different gods. You can be whatever you want. But when you go to these other countries, you got to be whatever that religion is. If you're going to be in that country, you better be walking around being a, a Buddha if you're in China. Point blank. You ain't going to be able to go in China and be talking about um, Catholic. Uh, well, you might. You, I don't know. Catholic religion is spread pretty tough now, too. Well, you better be a Muslim in one of them places. I know that much. You get a cut off. That's even before ISIS come around, huh? But that's real talk, though. You know, if you don't, if you don't worship those religions in a lot of these places, listen, you 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 won't make it. They serious about that stuff. So if they so serious about following their gods, why can't the true children of Israel be serious about a higher? Why can't we fight for a higher the way these other nations are fighting for their gods? And we all backwards, you guys. No, you want to know what the problem is? We're too busy trying to be like them. And we're the chosen people. We have the, we have the number one power of all time. He's the only power. And we're fighting to be like them and follow their gods. Just neglecting I am that I am, which is Ahaya Asha Ahaya. Go ahead. We're in the book of Ezekiel. We're in chapter 36, verse 21. And he reeked, but I had pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. So he says, I had pity for my name. That's what was just said right there. Break down the word pity. We have pity. It is H2550. Pity is H2550 and we have Kama K 
called Ma. And it is C H A M A L. Come on. C H A M A L. And it is primitive root to commiserate. Read the rest. By implication to spare. Have compassion, have pity. So he says. I have compassion for my holy name. That's what Ezekiel 36 and 21 says. I have pity, which is compassion. I have compassion for my name. Commiserate. All right. So the Most High cares dearly about his name. Don't be calling him all these other names of God. I have commiserate. Commiserate. Break down the word commiserate in the, in the, in the Webster. Mm -hmm. We have commiserate, and it is to pity, to compassion, to feel sorrow, pain, or regret for another in distress applied to person. So he has sorrow. Commiserate means sorrow. I have pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel have profaned among the heathen. So he says his name has been profane. All right. Break down the word profane. We're giving you all this breakdown so people can see what's happening. That way when you go outside and you realize when you say his name, why people act the way they act. All right. Which the house of Israel have profaned among the heathen. Whether they went. Where did they go? To all the other countries. America's one of them. So the name has been profaned in America. There ain't no holiness here in this land. Profane? We have profane. It is H2490. Profane is H2490. And we have Kalal. Kalal. And it is C H A L A L. Kalal. C H. A L A L and it is to wound to dissolve to break one's word so profane right here in this precept means to wound to dissolve to break one's word what word the word that was given to Moses in Exodus 3 and 13 through 15. He gave Moses his name and is being broke. To break one's word. That's profane. To wound, to dissolve. His name has been dissolved. It's like nothing. It's gone. But I, but 21 says, but I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had dissolved. The house of Israel had to break my word. That's what that means. To wound, to dissolve, to break. Okay? Jeremiah, uh, uh, Ezekiel uh, 22. Just go on ahead. 36 and 22. We're in the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 36, verse 22. And it reads, Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Most High, a high I do not, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Most High, saith the Most High, a high. When I shall be sanctified in you before there are. The word sanctify right there means to pronounce. Make, pronounce. Alright, so he says, and I will sanctify my great name. I will pronounce my great name. Okay? So that's what we have to do, you guys. We have to go out and pronounce his name because he says he will make known. He will pronounce his name. Whether people are profaning it or not. He will 
make known, pronounce his name, and that's what we have today. Now, over the last few years, we have many people who have woken up now, and they call on the true name because he has now made known his name. He's pronounced it again. It's been dissolved, and then over the last few years, he's brought it back to surface, and now his name is being pushed out there again. You hear it more. You go on the YouTube. You go to Facebook. You get on the internet. You hear many people using this name now. Versus seven years ago, you never heard nobody using this name, would you? Anywhere you went, you didn't hear nobody using his name. But he is now making his name known. It's now being pronounced throughout all the people. Okay? So once you start calling on the true name Mahaya, the heathen will know it. That's what it just said in verse 23. When not, it says, which in the middle of it says, which ye have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am the most high. So like right now, when we go out, they see us in our metries. They see us with our fringes on. They know something's up. The heathen, the so-called white man, when they see that, they be like, hold on. Who woke this man up? Let me get Willie Lynch on the phone. Hey, is our time up? They hear you start calling on the true name of Hyatt, they get scared. They get worried. They don't like knowing that we now know the truth. Verse 24. Book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 24. And here we read, for I will take you from among, excuse me, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all country and will bring you into your own land. So he says he will take you from among the heathen. He's talking about Israel. And he said he's going to gather us from all the countries from across the whole world and I will bring you into your own land. So the most high, the highest I am that I am says, hey, in that end day, I'm going to take you all from amongst the heathens that I scattered you among out of all these different countries. And I'm going to take you back into your own land, which is Jerusalem. Okay? He's talking to us. He knows right now we're doing bad. We're in captivity. We're in bondage. Of course he knows that because he put us back in bondage. He told us, you don't want to serve me and you don't want to follow me. I'm not going to just let you sit in Jerusalem and, and disown me. I'm not going to let you sit in the room and call on these other gods. No, I'm going to send you into the other lands, serve your enemy. You can call on their gods. All right. And then in due time, when you start realizing what you've done wrong and you've corrected yourselves, now I'll bring you back home. Judges 13 and 17. And that's what we have going on right now in today's era. We have a lot of different people who will start to wake up. We have a lot of different people who started to call on the true name. And now that you're calling on the true name, he's starting to make that spirit available to where now we can follow the guidance of the true spirit and get out of bondage. It's the only way you're going to get out of bondage. That's the only way you're going to get out of America is by being under the true spirit. And once you're under that true spirit, he's going to guide you right on out of here. But at first it starts with what? Preparation. You have to prepare yourself. So with preparation, you have to prepare your spirit on a daily basis. You have to wake up and make sure you get out of the flesh and you get in the spirit. And once you get in the fear, spirit, now you fear the most high, a higher. Now you know his name. Now you know who to fear. And once you fear him, now he'll guide you in every step you take. Now he'll make all the blessings that you need available. Now all the prayers that you're praying, he'll hear all right, go ahead. Yep. We're in the book of Judges. Chapter 13, verse 17. And it reads, And Manoah said unto the angel of the Most High, What is thy name? That when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Most High said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? So verse 17 says, And Manoah said unto the angel of the Most High, What is thy name? That when the sayings come to pass, we may do the honor. So we want to know your name, so when, it, when, when everything come to pass, we can do you honor. And the angel of the Most High said unto him, Why askest thou Thus after my name Seeing it is a secret 
So the name was a secret until it was published. And it wasn't published until it was given to Moses. Go to Exodus 34 and 4. So the name was always a secret. All right. Even the angels, their names was a secret. All these names were secrets. All right. Nobody knew none of the angels' names. Nobody knew none, the Most High's name. All the names were secrets. And then the Most High finally gave Moses. Moses was the only person that had the opportunity. Though. You have to understand. But see, people try to play it as if when you tell them what Moses, he gave Moses his name. And people are like, well, that's a name that was back then for them. No, Moses was the only person that had the opportunity to ask the Most High his name. And when he had the opportunity, he asked and he gave Moses that name. But nobody else had that, 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 that privilege. Exodus 34 and 4. In the book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 4, and it reads, And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up unto Mount Sinai, as the Most High had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Most High descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Most High. So when Moses went and got the two tables of stone, which is the two commandments in the mountain, and the Most High descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Most High. Give them the word proclaim. We have proclaimed. It is eight seventy one twenty one. Proclaimed is eight seventy one twenty one. And we have Kara. Kara. It is Q A R A. Kara. And it is. To call out to that is properly addressed by name. Read it again. It says to call out to that is properly addressed by name. So when when the Most High came to Moses in the cloud in the mount, and it says, and proclaim the name of the Most High, proclaim means to call out that is properly addressed by name. So now Moses I'm going to give you my name to call out to, and this is the proper way to address me. This is the proper way to address me from here on out. Because before here and there, he was called a God like everybody else. But be, at this time, he says, here you go, Moses. I'm going to proclaim my name to you, and this is the proper way to address me. This is the proper way to call me out, which is I am that I am, which is a higher shall a higher. Let me show you how his name was basically God like everybody else before he gave Moses his name. Let's go to uh, uh, oh yeah, Exodus six, Exodus six and uh, six and two. We in the book of Exodus. So remember, this is after. He gave Moses his name in Exodus Exodus 3. Now we're in Exodus 6 and 2. Go ahead. We're in the book of Exodus, chapter 6, verse 2, and it reads, And the Most High spake unto Moses, and said unto him, I am the Most High. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. But by... My name Jehovah was I not known to them. So they put the name Jehovah in there. Why? Because that's the trickery of the profounding of his name. Remember they said we're going to dissolve the true name and we're going to put Jehovah in there. So they put Jehovah in there. But it, but the point of this precept is it says he in the, and God spoke to Moses. So his name, he was called God before he gave Moses his name. But the Most High spoke to Moses. And said unto him, I am the Most High. And he says, before you, Moses, I appeared unto Abraham, which was before you. I appeared unto Isaac and Jacob by the name God Almighty. 
they called me God Almighty because everybody else was called gods. So Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob called me God Almighty versus God. They put the Almighty at the end because they didn't know my name. So they called me God Almighty. But by my name, Ahia, Ashal Ahia, was I not known to them. Moses, I just gave you Ahia, Ashal Ahia. I just proclaimed Ahia, Ashal Ahia. So that's why what we just read in Exodus 34 and 5, when he says, I proclaim the name, proclaim means to call out to that is properly addressed by name. So Moses, you're the first person that I gave my name to call me out to properly address me by Ahia, Ashal Ahia. But your forefathers called me God Almighty. But let's, let me show you something how the Bible throws in the trickery to make you think his name is Jehovah. So right here he says, I appeared to Abraham, unto Isaac. So let's just say his name was Jehovah. Let me show you how they trick you. Let's just say his name was Jehovah. But how do we know his name is, his name ain't Jehovah. He just told his name to Moses in Exodus 3 and 14. That is, I am that I am, which is I am Shah I Where Jehovah come from? This is the deceivement of the so-called white men. But he says right here, I appear unto Abraham, Isaac, and unto Jacob, by God Almighty, but the name Jehovah was I not known to him. So he basically saying, they didn't, they didn't know me by the name Jehovah. But let's go to Genesis 22 and 14. Okay. Genesis 22 and 14. Let's 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 show you how they they their lives. Go ahead. We're in the book of Genesis, chapter twenty-two, verse fourteen. And it reads, and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. It just told me in, Gen in Exodus six and two that Abraham didn't know me by the name of Jehovah. So if Abraham didn't know him by the name of Jehovah, how is he naming his place Jehovah Jireh? <laughs> See, people don't do their homework. So that's why you got people out there calling them Jehovah. And you're like, hold on. But listen, I just read two precepts right there that kills the name Jehovah. Smears it with, in, with mud. So that's a lie when they say Exodus 6 and 2 that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's go back to Exodus 6 and 2. Read 6 and 3 again and put the real name in there. Go ahead. And Abraham, excuse me, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of Power no, Almighty. God Almighty. They called him God Almighty. You can say God right there. Go ahead. God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. So by my name, Ahiah, Ashah, Ahiah. Was I not known to them? Okay, it's not Jehovah. Jehovah is not his name, but that's the name that the so-called white man put in there. And if you don't do your homework, you got so many people who are like, well, his name is Jehovah. It's in the Bible. No. Simple as fact right here told you that Abraham didn't know him by the name of Jehovah, but Abraham named the name of that mount Jehovah Jireh. That's false. False information. Go back to Exodus 34 and 5. You said Hosea 2 and 16. Right, Hosea 2 and 16, we're going to get down to that at the end. Exodus 35, 34 and 5, read it again. We're in the book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 5. And it reads, And the Most High descended in the cloud, and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Most High. So we already broke down proclaim in the Hebrew, okay, which means to call out to, that is, properly addressed by name, Give them the word proclaim in the Webster. We have proclaim coming from the Webster and it is published officially, promulgated, made publicly known. So proclaim in the Webster means published officially. This is official now. Moses, I just gave you my name. This is official. Okay, and not only is it official, my name is made publicly now. Okay, promulgated, broke that, break that, get the Webster on that. We have the Webster on promulgated, and it is published. So it also means published. 
So when you break down the word published, that means it's now on the shelves. That means it's now it's, it's, it's ready to go. So I proclaim my name to you, Moses, and now it's now being made publicly known. It's been ready. It's ready to go. Go tell the children of Israel, this is who I am. Ahaya Asha Ahaya, which is I am that I am, is ready. Let's go to Genesis 32 and 24. We got about 15 minutes left. Genesis 32 and 24. So now that we know his name is being proclaimed, published, okay, this is how you call me. The Hebrew word for publish will proclaim was to call out, to address by. So now I want the children of Israel and along with you, Moses, to address me by this, not by God Almighty no more. Don't address me by God Almighty, which Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob called me. Address me by I am that I am, which is Ahia, Ashal, Ahia. No one's doing that. So since no one's doing that, guess what? What did 2nd Edris 8 and 1 say? The world was made for many, but a few will only see the new world. So this is why you guys, that number is very short when he said a few people will be saved. Because you got too many stiff-necked and hard-headed people out here who wants to follow religions instead of following the King James Bible. Man, that's hardcore. People would rather follow religions versus following the King James Bible. Because all these religions nowadays have their own what? Bible. They all have their own Bible in some sense. Even if it is just the New Testament only, that's a new Bible. Genesis 32 and 24. All right. Book of Genesis. Chapter 32, verse 24. And he read, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his star, and the hollow of Jacob's star was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go for the day breaking. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with the most high, and with me, and hast prevailed. So this is when Jacob wrestled with the angel. And Jacob prevailed with the angel. He didn't let go. He asked, can I please be blessed? The angel said, what's your name? He says, Jacob. He says, no longer Jacob. It's Israel. Once Jacob's name was changing, he was blessed. Look what Jacob asked in verse 29. Go ahead. We're in verse 29. It says, and Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that? Thou doest ass after my name. And he blessed him there. So Jacob asked, hey, what, what's your name? You asked me my name, what's your name? The angel said, wherefore is it that thou doest ask after my name? Why are you asking me my name? Where does it say that you can ask me my name? Who are you? So Jacob was denied the name also. Just like Manoah. Moses is the only person that was able to get that name. Nobody else was able to get the true name of the Most High or his son, Yeshia, at that point in time. Okay? So we have to understand, you guys, deep down, when the name came and why it came at that point in time. Alright? And that's why it's so important because it was only given to one person and it was given to Moses for a reason. Okay, so don't let nobody else try to trick you and tell you, oh, uh, well, what he gave to Moses wasn't important. Or, or No, nobody else could get the true name but him. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 6 and 31. So other people in the Bible ask for the name. Other people in the Bible ask the angels and ask, hey, well, what's the name or can I get it? But no, it, it wasn't given to them. Only Moses was given the name. And why was Moses given the name? Because Moses was going on doing a, a, a duty for the Most High. He was going to release the true people from under the hands of Pharaoh. And by him releasing the people and, 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 and taking the people from under the hand of Pharaoh 
and bringing him into the wilderness, now that gave Ahia his chance to build the nation of Israel. That gave Ahia a chance to now say, this is who I am. I'm your power. Okay? So that was the main that was the reason why he gave Moses his name cuz he said this is my chance now to bring these people all into one area and proclaim to them who I am. And not only proclaim to them who I am, but to give them my laws, my statutes and my commandments. That was his chance to build the relationship with the true people. Go ahead. We're in the book of 2 Chronicles. Chapter 6, verse 31. And it reads, That they may fear thee to walk in thy ways so long as they live in the land which thou gavest unto our father. Moreover, concerning the stranger which is not of thy people is, but is come from a far country for thy great name's sake. In thy mighty hand, and I stretched out arm, if they come and pray in this house, then hear thou from the heavens, even from the thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name, and fear thee, as doeth thy people Israel, and may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. So the house that he built is the house that I was just talking about. The house, the people that he took from under Pharaoh told Moses to take him into the wilderness so he could teach him the laws and commandments, give him his name. He was building the house of Israel. He was building the nation right there. He was building the nation right before the eyes of Moses. And he says, in that house is to call him by thy name, which is the name that he gave Moses. Moses asked him that question. What is your name? These people that you want me to go get, this house that you're building, they're going to ask your name. And what is it? And he gave it to him. So that's why he says, and they are to call me by thy name. Verse 34. Second Chronicles chapter 6, verse 34. And it reads, If thy people go out to war against their enemies by the way that thou shalt send them, and they pray unto thee toward this city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Okay, so he tells you again, the house which I have built for thy name. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. So the name is real important. But you have to understand this too. Okay? So like what we just read. The name I am that I am, which is Ahiah Shah Ahiah, was for who? The house of Israel. <laughs> so look where Israel is today. They're in the hands of the enemy, which is the Gentiles, right? So the Gentiles don't have to call on Ahiah Shah Ahiah. They, they can do whatever they want. The name was given to who? The house of Israel. And the house of Israel is in captivity. And they are in captivity against people who don't have to call on the name of Ahiah or Shah Ahiah. So once Martin Luther King came to the so-called white man and said, hey, basically, we want to be like y'all. Just, hey, stop killing us on every corner and we'll be like y'all. Once we took that, that oath, now we call on their gods. Now we do what they want to do. It ain't the Gentiles' fault that we don't call on the Most High. We read it earlier that they now use us to profane his name. They don't got to do it. They don't have to call on the name of Hayashah or Hayah. They do if they want to be saved. But the name wasn't given to them. The name was given to the house of Israel, which is the people that are in bondage. The people that are in the yoke with the, the yoke around their spirit. So since you have the yoke around your spirit and your slave master... He don't have to call on the higher Shah or higher. And since you want to be like the slave master so much, you follow what he do. It's time to break the yoke of bondage spiritually, you guys, and start calling on the true power, which is a higher. And like I say, 
Romans 10 and 3, for whom shall ever call on the name of Ahiah shall be saved. People should write that down and put that on their refrigerator, point blank. Go ahead. We're in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. And it reads, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear, heal their land. So the Most High Ahia says, so for my people that are called by my name, if they humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Then I'll hear their prayers. Then I'll hear from them. I'll, I'll pay attention to them. But they have to call by my name. They have to humble themselves and call by my name and seek my face. Seek my face means they have to know who they're looking for. You have to know who you're looking for on a daily basis, which is a higher shaw or higher. You can't be in these religions looking for Zeus, which they call Jesus. You're not going to be heard. Verse 15. Verse 15. Now mine eyes shall be open, and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. So he says, now my eyes shall be open. You call on my name? Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now my ears can hear your prayer because you're calling on the true name. This is why his name is important. You must pray to the true name, the right name, if you want him to hear you. You can't be praying to all these other gods and different religions and stuff. He's not hearing your prayers. Verse 16. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 16. And it reads, for now I have chosen, excuse me, for now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. So it says, and now my name shall be there forever. Okay? Not for a little time, Moses. Not until y'all just get through the wilderness for this 40 years forever all right so now let's break down why i keep saying the name jesus is a different god okay so the same thing with the most high he gave moses his name now let's break down the name jesus all right or what we should be calling him. let's go to hosea 2 and 16 go ahead we're in the book of Hosea, chapter 2, verse 16. And it reads, and it, shall, and it shall be at that day, saith the Most High, that thou shalt call me Ish, and shalt call me no more Baal. For I will take away the names of Baal out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. Alright, so it says, And thou shalt call me Ish. Alright, it says, and it, it, and it shall be at that day, said the Most High, that thou shalt call me Ish. And shall call me no more Bailey. Alright, and he says, It's going to take the word Bailey out of their mouths. Alright, here, read. Alright, here, because a lot of people don't know what Bailey is. So it says, and they shall call me no more Bailey. We're going to read from the Compact Bible Dictionary, the Zondervans. All right, he's just going to read what Bailey means. There you go, down there at the bottom. So it says, don't call me Bailey no more. That's not my name. I break down what Bailey is. We have Bailey or Bailey, and it is. My Lord, my Master, the common name for all local gods, as well as Jehovah. Hmm. Say it again. Why are we calling them Jehovah? People say, oh, well, Jehovah's in the Bible. He says in Hosea 2 and 16, and, then, and it shall be at that day, said the Most High, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shalt call me no more Bailey. 
For I will take away the names Balaam out of the, her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their names. He don't be. He don't want to. They don't. He don't want to hear these names anymore. And what does Bailey mean again? We have Bailey. It says, "My Lord." Don't call me Lord. My master, the common name for all local gods. So the common name for all local gods. What are your local gods? These religions. All these religions where they have all these different gods are local gods. He don't want to, he don't, don't call me those names. Go ahead. It says, the name of all local gods as well as Jehovah. As well as Jehovah. Don't call me Jehovah. Jehovah is under Bailey. And he says, and thou shalt call me no more Bailey in Hosea 2 and 16. He says, call me Ishi. Okay. Break down the word Ishi. We have Ishi. It is H376. Ishi is H376. And it is Ayash. Ayash. And it is A Y A H. A H Y A S H. A H Y A S H. Ayash. And it is husband. So Ishi means husband. Okay. Ishi means husband. And when you break down who Yeshaya is, the son, the Messiah, he's the husband of the church, right? He's the husband of the church. Now let's break down Ishi and the Strongs. H 3469. We have H 3469. H 3469. And it is Yashai. Yashai. And it is Y A S H A Y A S H A Y Yasha And it is saving Okay So it means saving Is she means saving and it's from H 3467. Alright. Ishi is from H 3467, which means saving. Give them H 3467. We have H 3467. H 3467. And it is Yeshai. Yeshai and it is Y A S H A Yeshai Y A S H A and it is properly to be open wide or free that is by application to be safe Positively to free or successor. At all avenging, defend, deliver, help, preserve, rescue, be safe, bring, having salvation, save, savior, get victory. So H 3467, which is from saving means Yeshaya in Hebrew and it means salvation savior that's where the word savior comes from so Ishi all the way from Hosea 2 and 16 breaks down to a husband which goes into H3469 which means saving and H3469 comes from 3467 which is Yeshaya which means salvation, savior. So that's the true name of 
the Son, which is the Messiah. The Most High Son's name is Yeshua, it's not Jesus. And so many people are calling him Jesus. His name is the Savior, which means Yeshua. Okay? And I wanted to go over that so people can see why I discredit the name Jesus. Jesus just means Jupiter, which is Zeus. Okay? So this is why we use the true name. And the true name is Yeshua. Alright? And if anybody have any questions on how we found that and what we did to get there, I'll show you again on your own time. Somebody can call me and say, hey, how did you do that? How did you find that? Alright? And I'll show you. Okay? In the last precepts of the night, to show you that the word Savior, okay, means what it means. Let's go to Isaiah. It's a few, few places in Isaiah we can go. Okay, let's go to Isaiah. Um, Isaiah 45 and 15. Go ahead. On the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 15, and it reads, Very, thou art a power that hiddest thyself, O power of Israel, the Savior. Okay, and the word Savior right there, so it says, Verily, thou art a power that hiddest thyself, O power of Israel, thy Savior, the Savior. The word Savior right there is what? H3467, which means Yeshia. So the word Yeshia means Savior. It equals Savior. So that's how you say the Son's name, which is the Messiah, which they call Christ, which they call Jesus. It's Yeshia. Okay? All right. So now that we know it's Yeshia, let's take a couple of more precepts real fast to show you another deception that they use okay so one of the sets so they use a deception with the name Jehovah for the name God now we're going to show you a deception that they use for the name Yeshia alright let me show you what they do let's go to Genesis 49 and 18 Let me show you the deception that the world uses for your Shia. So this is why when you go in the world, you have so many people that know his name ain't Jesus. But instead of using the name Jesus, they use this name that right here that we're about to go over. And it's not this name, it's your Shia. Genesis 49 and 18. We're in the book of Genesis. Chapter 49, verse 18. And it reads, I have waited for thy salvation, O Most High. So they take the word salvation right here and break it down and say, oh, that's his name. No, we just broke down his name, which is Savior, which is Yeshua. Break down the name salvation right here. We have salvation. It is H3444. Salvation is H3444. And it is. Yashawaha. Yashawaha. So it's right here is Yashawaha, but the world calls it Yeshua. In modern day Hebrew, they use the, the E's and the U's, so they call it Yeshua. So you have a lot of churches that call him Yeshua. Well, his name is not Jesus, it's Yeshua. No, it's not. It's Yeshua. Let me show you what Yeshua means. What does Yeshua mean? We have Yeshua, Yahshua, and it is a feminine passive participle, something saved. No, read, read the whole thing. Read it again. Feminine passive participle of H3467. So it says Yeshua is a feminine word from the word H3467. What's 3467? Yeshia. But it says Yeshua is the feminine word for Yeshua. 
I mean, for Yeshua. So Yeshua, so people that are out there using the word Yeshua, you're using the feminine word. And we all know the male, the male hygiene and the male, male body is the dominance. When salvation comes, I'm going to want to call on the, the dominant, the male dominance, not the female dominance, which is the feminine passive, Yeshua. So Yeshua is not the word that we should be using. That was uh, Genesis 49 and 18. So like I've said once before in the lesson. If you're walking down a dark alley, all right, and it's at nighttime, and say I'm about to walk down a dark alley, and I know it's some gangbangers at the end of that alley, and it's dark. And on my side, before I walk through this alley, I got Eric with me, and I got Erica. Before I walk down that alley, I might want somebody to go with me. I'm not going to turn to Erica and say, hey, Erica, walk down this alley with me. No, I'm going to turn to Eric and say, hey, Eric, let's go. So the same thing with Yeshua and Yeshua. You're going to call on the feminine, which is Yeshua, or you're going to call on the masculine, which is Yeshua. But Yeshua means Savior, okay, which is equals to salvation. That's, that's the name you should be calling on if you want to be saved, which is Ishi. And Hosea 2 and 16 says, thou shalt call me Ishi and no more Bailey. And Bailey means Jehovah. Lord and all local gods. Alright, so with that in mind, we broke down the most high's name, which is I am that I am, Ahia Shaw Ahia, and we took a little time to break down his son's name, which is Ishi Yeshaya, which means Savior. Okay? So now that we have all this information, don't take his name in vain. Don't put no other gods before him. You now have the information on who you should be calling if you want your prayers to be heard. We went over that tonight. You now have the information if you want salvation. These are the names that you should be calling on if you want to be saved. If you want your prayers to be heard. This is what you want. And this is what you need. So with that in mind, we'll say all praises to the Most High Ahaya. We'll pray out and then we'll open it up for questions at the end of the lesson. At the end of the prayer.